we are going to start okay for before knowing uh, you are seeing my pre slide presentation right all all of them yes yes the piping layout and piping flange material that is a slide i am presenting now okay so here be a stress engineer here must know basics from the layout that material point of view and everything then only can become a best stress engineer so okay for that first of all i have small questions for the gets can anyone tell me what is the difference between the pipe piping and pipeline anyone guys mr leo uh, here we use term uh, uds instead of get okay so you need to uh, uds instead of gts okay uds okay you yeah, uds really. Uh, anyone can tell me mr abdul abdullah or jasim or kalpesh anyone can tell me what is the difference between the pipe piping and pipeline everyone unmute please so we can it's like a discussion and a technical conversation we can make it's not like a full lecture i'm only i'm going to speak it's like a question and answer only most probably because we are all the working professionals so all can unmute and so we can have a discussion so technical stuff can you all everyone unmute please so accordingly it will be a good conversation and a discussion yeah right because it's like a technical discussion most of the topics like a technical kind of discussion only so unmute and we can discuss and you can ask and you can stop me at any time and you can ask your doubts everything like it like that only the sessions will be going okay so now anyone can tell me what is this pipe and piping and pipeline what is the difference pipe is just what carries the fluid and then if you have a if you have a pipeline it's the actual pipeline with the whole um flanges and pumps valves connected okay like abdul said so pipe is a hollow cylinder shape it's made of any metal or a non metal in that we are transferring the fluid whether it's a gas or a liquid whatever it may be from one place to another it's a just a component it's a single component it's a hollow cylindrical shape that is the pipe piping means it's a combinations of components like pipe fittings flange elbows wall t bolt and everything it's like a piping and the pipeline it's a long run pipe that we convey the oil or gas from one place to another place it's a long distance travel that is called pipeline okay and now uh, the next small question anyone can tell me what is upstream midstream and downstream which we are using in our oil and gas what's the difference jasim can you try upstream yeah anyone please upstream is when uh, you extract the oil or the gas from the ground okay. midstream is the transportation process and downstream is the refining process yeah you are great you are right so that's the thing so upstream it's an exploration and the production that is the main thing which is going to happen in the upstream so whether in the upstream it will be the onshore or offshore whether in the land surface or a sea bed wherever the exploration and production which is going to happen is called upstream and then mid midstream is a transportation maybe through pipeline or through cargo ship or any tanker lorry or whatever it is based on that we are transferring the fluid from one location to the other location from the upstream to the downstream we are transporting the fluid that is called mixed and then as you said it's a downstream here the refinery process the petrochemical plant the refinery everything is going to happen the crude distillation has to going to happen from the crude the petrol diesel kerosene naphtha butane methane propane like that all the things will going to get it. that is the terms now we will come to the some materials suggestions there are materials means piping material maybe the ferrous and non ferrous material like that we can differentiate and also the non metals most probably the main ferrous which we are using in our projects are the carbon alloy and stainless steel this is the main thing for that the difference what does the difference means you see the carbon steel carbon steel which we are using for the temperature range from minus 29 degree celsius to 427 degree celsius and even though up to minus 46 degree celsius we can use the carbon steel anyone tell me what is the spec for the carbon steel what is the spec name can anyone tell me for the low temperature carbon steel what is the material spec name we have a 106 grade b api 5l grade b like the different materials we have right so for the low temperature carbon steel what is the material do you have any idea anyone mr manoj can you tell me 
A triple three. Great. We yeah, you are great. Five. That is right. Yes, you are right. So like that, uh, many different materials. As a stress engineer, we must know what is the spec and what is the combination to create that spec. Like that, each and everything, and what, for which temperature, what is the material. So like that, the differentiate the stress engineer has to know. Maybe this is the layered point of view, but the stress engineer have the knowledge about this material differentiation for different things. So here we have the other combination, the cast ion. Some components will be added to get a new alloy material. Maybe a nickel or chromium or silicon or a more like that. Many things are we are adding to get the alloy material. Why I'm telling the, like this means if you see the code books, I'm just sharing one code book. So this is the code book which we are using for the flanges B16.5. Uh, Manoj, Mr. Manoj, you are working with this ASME code books only, right? The projects, everything with the ASME and the API code books only. Am I right? Yes, yes, right. So that means we can, because some companies are working with the British standards like that. So that's the reason I asked this question. So here for flanges, if you're working with the flanges, the code book is ASME B16.5. If you go inside this code book, you see there is a grouping's will be there. What is the forging, casting, and plates like that? If you see here, different destination is there. C, S, I, that means the silicon, magnesium, or carbon, or vanadium, like that. The combination, this combination create this material. So, A105 means is a combination of the carbon and the silicon. So, A350 grade L, LF2 means is a combination of the carbon, magnesium, silicon. So, like that, the combinations are there. In that, what is the purpose of this combination? What is silicon? What is the usage? What is the advantage and disadvantage? What is the vanadium advantage, disadvantage? What is the nickel advantage, disadvantage? Like that, the small presentation now I'm going to share with you. Okay. So that is the thing combination. We create the different materials. Okay. And then the stainless steel. The stainless steel most probably we use where the more corrosion is there and more heat is there. So it's like a heat resistant and corrosion resistant means most probably we go for the stainless steel material. The temperature maximum above 530 or 540 it be going means that it will be a stainless steel. Okay. So now I'm going to tell one by one what is the purpose we are adding this silicon. So what is the advantage of silicon? We are making a combination in the material means which increase the hardness and wear resistance. And this also has some disadvantage if you add more content of the silicon. That means it will affect the plastic properties and the toughness also it will be affecting. So there is some limit in adding the thing. So we are not going to depth into the material. As a stress engineer, we have to get some idea about this. Thing. So that is the reason I'm sharing this content for you. And then Magnus, the MN. Magnus, why we are adding is that it's increased the tensile strength and it also remove or improve the bad influence of the sulfur. So that is the advantage the magnesium was adding in the material. And desert also have some disadvantage. If more content of the magnesium will add, it will affect the welding properties. And it also reduce the heat contentivity of the steel. So like that sulfur, sulfur also we are adding in our material because which improves the machinability. So that's the reason the sulfur was adding in our material. And this also have some disadvantage. That means if we have more sulfur content, it will create some impurity in the castle and maximum we can maintain up to 0.04 percentage of sulfur in the material. Likewise, phosphorus, phosphorus which increase the strength and hardness for the material and this also have a disadvantage means which reduce the plastic property and the toughness of the cast steel. So this also 0.04 percentage max we can add in our material like chrome. Chrome which improve the hardening capacity during the heat treatment process. And this also have some disadvantage will affect the plastic properties. Likewise, the MO. MO which improve the hardening capacity. And likewise, nickel means nickel which improve the tensile strength and toughness of the casting. Vanadium which used to refine the grain size. So that is the reason these are all the things which we are making a combination with the carbon to get a new product okay so likewise the products as a stress engineer he must know what is the differentiate the thing is the major 
materials which we are using our, in our project and sharing here. A53, A106, A333, these are all the carbon steels. And then the alloy A335, these are the alloy materials. And A312 is the stainless steel. So that is the differentiator. 335 means it's an alloy material. And 312 means it's a stainless steel. And the type will be the differentiator. P1, P11, P5, P9. Like that, the alloy material will be differentiated based on the temperature we are using this. And you can get all these details from a document that is called piping material specification, PMS. The piping material engineer will create the document.